opening our new facilities. We've got this beautiful courtyard. And um, so thank you all for coming along and I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, I want to start off by acknowledging that this morning we are meeting on the lands of my ancestors, the Wurundjeri people. And I want to take this opportunity to pay my respects to my elders, both past, present and emerging, elders from all nations. But I want to pay my respects to Aboriginal Gabbard this morning especially. I'd always like to acknowledge if there are any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us, I'd like to acknowledge them and pay my respects to them and their families. The woman Jenka, welcome. Warren Jerry Malik, Ian McCundy Bing. The Rundry people welcome everyone to land today. Warren Jerry, no, 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 put a ball, ball, Condi Bing, no, put a big ball, ball, silicon. The Wurundjeri people want you to look out to protect the land as they did long before. Wurundjeri country extends from the inner city of Melbourne. It goes, goes across the mountain to the Great Dividing Range, west to the Wurundjeri River, south to the Mordialic Creek and east to Mount Borbo. And the Wurundjeri people are part of the Kulin Nation and of the Wurrung language group. Hello, my name is Colin Hunter Jr. or Willer, meaning possum. The name given to me by my grandmother's young boy. I'm a proud and passionate seventh generation Wurundjeri man and a direct descendant of Bibbidji, who was Nullan Geta, or head of the tribe at the time of that first settlement. And it's through my grandmother, Gumbro, meaning White Dove, or only Tiny or Nana, she was known to us, Mel. They've got Aboriginal culture here in the world. My grandmother was one of the last of the actual people born in the early 1920s up at Coronet Mission in Hillsford before she got pushed up the barrel on the river in New South Wales. In Aboriginal culture, a great deal of respect is given to the land, the plants and the animals alike. And I've got my beautiful gum leaves. I'm going to place them somewhere out of the wind. And as you're moving around today, if you get an opportunity, take a nice one and put it in your pocket. Significant as was a pretty safe for long country and give you the access to the resources of your own country. And why on Warrantry country, you're most welcome to the traditional lands and the waterways of the Warrantry people. So, woman, check and welcome. Look, as black fellas moved around country, as a Warrantry man, I didn't go down to Geelong to offer on country or to Bendigo to judge our own country or even Dallas Springs to Arundel country and just go on country and access the resources. The only way we can keep the sustainability of the whole thing is to have our clearly defined clown boundaries. And part of that welcoming ceremony will be the cleansing of the smoke to ensure when you come on country, you come off clean spirit. So I'm going to run around and cleanse a bit of smoke and I'm going to talk as I go. If you fast forward to 1855, 20 years on, well, there's only 18 of our mob left from what we know, because we all descend from Uncle William Barrick's sister, only Annie Borak. And then I talk about that story of self-determination at Corrin Dirk, where my grandmother was born in 21. She was the last female baby born on the mission. You know, we've been a generation up there. Later years, won all the awards, but we're still waiting on the prize money. So look, it's a sad story from Melbourne, it's not my story, so I encourage you to learn it. story if you're from Melbourne, it's not my story, but um, in my day role I worked for the city of Yarra, and I managed the Aboriginal partnership policy I had for the last 11 years, so 
people will remember back to 2017, the January 26th conversation. People remember. You know, I was a troublemaker that started all that trouble. Well so, done. Yeah. Look, is there any questions? No questions too silly. You shy, my baby. <laughs> Look, if you want to learn a little bit more, get on that thing and punch in the Aboriginal history of Yarra. And all our resources come up there. There's a, a, a Warrenjeri history project. Uh, there's a plaque store. Because in Gertrude Street, Fitzroy, people know Gertrude Street, Fitzroy? Yeah. There used to be 21 Aboriginal community controlled organisations. There's one left. So yeah, and on there there's a teacher's resource too, actually it goes from year three to year ten, I think. It needs some update because some of the links are broken, but you've got no question. <laughs> People don't run from the barricades. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's, there's a nice one that the people know about, about I think it's either ten thousand or twenty thousand, we're not sure of the time. But you used to be able to walk to Tasmania. That, that honey, all the bay was the Bunurong's honey ground, so you could walk there. <coughs> when that bay filled up, that cut the Bunurong off from the Wafferong in Geelong. So we give them a strip around the bay, it's access there. So yeah. People know who the Warrantry are? Yeah, look, when I went to school, not many people did, so it's really good that everyone knows now. But I encourage you to learn that story. It's a, it's a fantastic story. Have people heard of Uncle William Barrett? Yeah, look, he's, um, people know about his, build, his image on the building in town. Yeah, well, when they done that, they actually got it a little bit wrong, the image. And at the time, one of Uncle William's paintings came up for sale. He's got them all around the world. But he never sold one of them. He traded them. Yeah, one came up for sale called Ceremony. And what it was, it was a window into how how people dress for ceremony with the possum skin drums, the emu skirts, the emu feather skirts. Anyway, it was a bit water damaged and we did a fundraiser and we raised 38,000 in two weeks. We had a lady come in on her ride on wheelchair with 10,000 bags. Anyway, Mr. Grolo, who's got a connection to the Wurundjeri, um, said to us, if we leave the facade the way it is, there's half a million dollars to go to the auction. So we went to the auction with 538,000 and we still missed out by 20,000. We're probably one of the oldest pieces of cultural art in the state. We tried to team up with everyone. So such a shame it went to the South Australian collector. And now it'll never be shown in Victoria again because if they do under the heritage laws it'll get stuck here. So, yeah. so we had that argument, is it, a, is it a piece of art or is it a cultural art? I thought it was a cultural art. Sure, you got no question. Oh, yeah. um, some indigenous authors that you might. Um, Uncle Bruce Pascoe. Yeah, Uncle Bruce Pascoe. Has anyone read Dark Emu? Yes. I have it. My partner has, but he's got a lot of books. There's another author, a white fella called Uncle Mick Roywood, who lives out in Alfred. He's in his 90s now, but he's written 21 books on the Warrens of people. But Uncle Mick thinks the treaty was signed over in plenty because he lives over that way, so yeah. A bit of confusion, but as far as we know, it's on America. No, no more? Well, I'm going to say thanks for your time, and I've got to nick off and go do some work with the city of Yarra. So I work with the mob on Smith Street. Does anyone know the mob on Smith Street? Hollywood? I say to people, you don't have to go to Alice Springs to see this vantage. You can just go to the park in Collingwood. We've got a lot of our mobs out there. Now, if you're a black fella, you're two and a half times more likely to be homeless. You're five times more likely to become in contact with the justice system. And I go to funerals for people my age in their 50s. All the time. So we're getting closer. Look, thanks for your time. Can we give Uncle Colin a big round of applause? Google Mount Williams too and have a look what that says. <laughs> <laughs>